Three Tanzanian technology companies have won a combined $250,000 for their innovative solutions to various sectors of the East African economy. Now, their words was, were, was part of the U.S. Embassy of Tanzania's Arnold Technology Challenge here last week. Let's take excerpts from this panel of experts in digital technology, innovation, and artificial intelligence. Era where content is generated uh, through AI, we can generate photos, text, and so on, so can people generate cyber threats. Now you can go to ChatGPT and prompt it to actually create an attack for you. You don't have to be a hacker or a cyber guru for you to do that, yeah? So people have access and the knowledge on how to create viruses, to create commands that can cause um, disruption, yeah? So with that, it comes uh, the risk of AI-generated threats and AI-generated cyber attacks. So um, with that, we need to have tools that are ready and able to detect AI-generated attacks because this is we are in this world now, yeah. So um, what we have done in that space is with our company Serenzik Africa, we have a tool called Ascari. Ascari is an AI-enabled threat intelligence pr platform that helps to. Um, detect threats and stop them. All AI enabled threats. So we are, we, we're still building, we, we'll keep on building, but as a way to um, fight and stay safe in this uh, um, world currently, we need tools as such. Tools that are able to detect AI generated threats and tools that are able to protect our organizations from the threats that comes from AI. How humans behave with new information, new technology, not so much has changed. We still like to alter things. We still like to add on some information. We still like to you know, make some edits and call them improvements, however you say it. <clears throat> and so when you look at the role of AI in a society like Tanzania, um, it's going to simply amplify what's already here. And that's very important to understand, which means so if there are people who are doing fraud, they will simply amplify what they're already doing. Yeah. If there are people who are um, you know, in cybersecurity like uh, Esther, you know, they will use this tool that way. And so my concern is to the normal mananchi, mm -hmm. yeah, like not even the techies. Um, are we aware of how much AI, first of all, I know so many people like are talking about it recently, the past two years, but it's been, it's like for researchers and everything, AI has been around for a while. And so somehow you already consumed it, whether you knew it or you didn't know it. And, and so my question is to a normal mananchi, um, if we are looking at uh, data as something that is valuable, um, so how are you using AI from your point of view because yes, things, things are already changing. Yes, people are taking advantage of this. But the question is, what are you doing with this tool? And so uh, in a society like Tanzania, where tech sometimes takes like seven years to, to arrive, so we're like, when I'm speaking about uh, in marginalized societies, not you Dar es Salaam people <laughs> with your fancy English and everything. <laughs> I'm talking about uh, to, to someone in the village that, you know, uh, a farmer who is using mobile money service to like, you know, buy something to, to spend money on this. And if there are people who are doing fraud, it will simply be to a level that it will take a while for them to understand if this is somebody is, is committing a fraud right now. And so my call is, again, back to, to, to history and societies, is just to be vigilant. Like, like you just have to, to, to step forward and take advantage of this. Yes, we have access to internet, but for me, more dialogue. Like, like for a normal mananchi, like speak to them about AI, like in a sense that they understand that this is already changing how I live. This is already changing uh, my, my future uh, job opportunities. There is penetration but then when you talk about internet and then there comes the usage. Mm -hmm. So from the perspective of Nigerian, I'd just like to talk about the data from what we're seeing. 
Um, we're having youth, because more than 80% of our users are actually and graduated within the last five years. Uh, we're a very basic platform, uh, but you know somebody will be uploading something while there is very clear information that it should be a kilobyte, x kilobyte, and somebody's uploading something that is like gigabytes, etc. Um, someone is not able to figure out their password. Um, they've done their password and now they're doing the forget password, but they'll give you a call and you have to, to do those basic things. Um, you know, when it comes to doing skills assessment and you're doing an aptitude assessment and you have to give them a step hand holding. And why, have, why am I talking about that? Because we will talk about AI and that is the reality and we need to talk about AI because we need to make sure that we are actually, I'm coming back, we are taking part actively in making sure that there is our voices there, not just as Tanzanians but also as Africans. But there is a stark reality that the normal mwananchi, we have to break down what AI is. And so for what we're doing at Nigeri is starting to look at how do we look for partners, and this is a call for collaboration. Partners who are doing AI for current workforce, AI for future workforce, because we need to make sure that our youth who are entering into the marketplace are able to actually deliver based on what is needed in the marketplace. Um, and then also being able to demystify what is AI. And we've started doing things like that because simply, um, so some of the courses that we're running right now in some of the universities is when we're talking about AI for CV Builder, like teaching them the different tools, but how to use them accordingly in making your CV and making your CV, you know, so that you don't have to do it every time, but you know, putting in the job description for this particular thing so that you can actually make your CV much more easier. Um, you know, so like starting to demystify what is AI, how can you actually apply AI to your normal day-to-day -day activities? And you're starting to see people actually using some of this. There's a group that I'm in and they've created this uh, AI song but you know they fed it in some information and it created this whole nice interesting song so like how do we demystify to actually use these tools on a day to day but there is a need to actually also educate that is the reality but one of the things that you you probably might not know is that there's a lot of bad content that is filtered before it comes to people's eye through algorithms through ai um, a good example is that i think there's been an improvement in how we can detect and remove hate speech um, on our platforms by almost over 50%. And so now we are around 0.02%. So for every thousand contents that are out there, only two are hate speech. And we are able to get to that level because of algorithms, because of the data that we have, training the algorithms to be able to detect and remove. So that's one side. So AI is really, really good for, for content moderation. I think the other side that is a very, very important discussion is because this technology is quite new in some parts of the world, in most parts of the world, to be quite honest, there's very, very good reasons to be concerned about it. There's bad actors that are using algorithms, and I think examples have been given, um, to, to, to share either you know, content that is aimed at defrauding others, or hate speech, or videos, or audio videos, audio visuals that, that are aimed at almost manipulating a community. And so that is a concern. The, what we are doing from, from Meta's perspective, I'll share two things. What we are doing from Meta's perspective, and what I think would be great for, for us to do as an ecosystem in Tanzania. From Meta's perspective, the most important thing that we think can be done is watermarking. So it's being able to tell you that this content has been developed through the use of, of algorithms, so through the use of AI. So if now you are to use Meta AI, and I currently use it, you know, and you are to you know, get an image, I've done it even on my WhatsApp channel, an image of a cow, a very beautiful cow, and, and share it, it will come with a watermark that says this has been generated through AI. So that, that is one area. So it's watermarking, it's sharing that this content has been developed through this means. The issue we are having is because there's a, there's a lot of people that have open sourced their technologies, and we believe that's the right path to take all over the world, that aren't necessarily using the same mechanism to either watermark or watermarking uh, consistently. <laughs>